Hey, Chris Ferdinandi from the Lean Web Club here. I teach people a simpler, faster way to build for the web. Recently, I launched a series of tutorials around serverless functions and how to build your own APIs with Cloudflare workers. And today, we're gonna be looking at one of the lessons from that series. You can view the whole thing right now by creating a free account over at leanwebclub.com. But for now, let's just dig into the video. You can author and edit your serverless functions directly in the Cloudflare GUI, but it's a little bit hard to see on screen. So for this course, I'm gonna be working in a text editor and then copy and pasting the code over into the GUI uh, when I'm ready to save and deploy it. To get started, let's first add our fetch event listener. Whenever this listener is triggered, we're going to run the handle request method, passing in the event request as an argument. The handle request method will run whatever function should happen in response to the request and then return a new response. Inside the callback function, we'll use the event respond with method to send that response back. Now that we're listening for HTTP requests, we can create the handle request function itself. This is what will actually run our serverless functions. Because API calls are asynchronous, we need to prefix this function with the async operator. Inside this function, uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, return an API response with a success message. And to do that, we're going to use the new response constructor to create a response object and return it. For the first parameter, the body property, we'll pass in an object with the greeting property and we'll give it a value of high universe. Then we'll pass the object into the JSON stringify method to convert it into a string. The second argument on the new response constructor is an object of options. We're going to include a status code of 200, which indicates that the request was successful. In order to actually be able to call this API though, we need to also define some permission headers to allow requests from other domains. If we don't, we'll get a cores error when we try to call this API. So to do this, we're going to use the new headers constructor and assign it to the headers variable. And this accepts uh, an object of access control allow permissions. I have here um, a good kind of starting point uh, for general use rules for public APIs. In a later lesson, we'll look at how to secure your endpoint and modify these a bit for different needs, but this will get us started. Um, whenever you see an asterisk, that's a wildcard. Um, so here we're going to allow any origin to call this API. We're allowing the following methods, get, post, put, delete, options, and head. And this is a comma separated list. And then we're going to allow um, all different header types, um, again, using the wildcard here. So inside our object of options on our response, we will um, create another property, headers, and assign that new headers um, object to it. Uh, and um, with that, we now have a serverless function set up that will um, listen for calls and then respond with a high universe uh, response. We can copy this paste it into Cloudflare workers, uh, and then hit save and deploy to, um, to publish this. Um, and so it just takes a second, uh, and then um, it will tell you that it was saved a few seconds ago, and we now have a live serverless function accessible with an API call. That's it for today. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, or share it with anyone you think might find it useful. I publish a few videos like this every week, so subscribe and click that bell icon to get notified whenever they come out. And if you wanna watch the entire serverless series right now, head over to leanwebclub.com and create your free account. See you next time. Cheers.